Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As some of you might know, I'm an art ambassador for Jerry's Artorama, and they sent me a box of new stuff for me to check out. So let's take a look and see what's inside, and I'll let you know what I think of it, and maybe you can make your own decision on whether it's something you would want to try out. So let's check it out. All right, so every month they're supposed to send me a new box of things to review and let me know what I think of them. So they gave me a, a bunch of really interesting, cool stuff that I'm excited to check out. So let's go through it real quick. First thing out of the box will be this Strathmore Watercolor Travel Journal. It's a pretty thin book because it doesn't have a cover like a hard cover or anything it's just a, it's just a small paper bound cover but i like this kind of a silicone rubber band that comes with it it's a uh, 20 pages 140 pound 300 gsm 7 by 10 inches strathmore watercolor travel journal and uh paper looks nice i like the um the texture of it. It's got kind of that cold press feel to it. And uh, Strathmore does this thing also with their visual journal where one side is that like cold press texture and the other side is more of like a canvas texture. So I guess you, the idea is that you could uh, decide which texture you like better when you're painting. And uh, I do like for myself personally the just watercolor texture with gouache so that's probably the sign I'll use, but it's a nice paper. I do wish it had more of a hard binding, but I think it's a good paper, so that would be nice to have. I don't know if I'll, it's something that I'll stick like in my bag and stuff, because I might be afraid of it bending and stuff. So that would probably be a studio study sketchbook. Here's the next thing, <laughs> one of these, flower palette. Don't be thrown off by the shape of this thing. The reason that they make these flower palettes is actually kind of a, a smart design for it. But let me read the back of it. It says, uh, nanoparticle size material. I think it's plastic, but we're not sure. Lightweight and structurally strong will not warp, which is very important if you're using water on it. For use in or away from the studio. Super stain resistant, easier to clean than other palettes. <laughs> it's got this thing, watch your watercolors blossom. And uh, it's eight inch diameter, six petal shaped wells measuring one and seven eighths inch by three and one eighth inch. I don't know if that matters that much, the exact size of it, but gives you an idea for what it looks like. And uh, it's nice and lightweight. Um, what I think I might like about it, as opposed to my ceramic palettes, is um, it's a lot lighter than the ceramic palettes I use when I take out in the field. So if this is as easy to clean as my ceramic palette, I, it will probably get a huge recommendation from me because I do like the size of the wells. Sometimes the ceramic palettes, especially the small ones, have small wells. And uh, maybe the, it doesn't need, necessarily need to be a, a flower, but um, maybe these little ind indented lips might actually help um, clean the brush off better when you um you know run your brush across it so let's see that's a fun one this looks very interesting to me it's the acrylamizer palette system and uh the whole idea about this one is that you'll waste less paint okay i'll just read the box great for out in the field or back in the studio Special gasket makes palette airtight and keeps moisture out. Blend your favorite colors in the removable mixing trays. And paint and accessories are included. Palette size 12 and a half by nine and a half by two and a quarter. So it's, its claims are safe color blends up to two weeks. Extend open working time for up to five hours. Never needs washing. Paint just peels off. Great for in the field or in the studio. So, this is what the box looks like. It's pretty big, right? <laughs> Takes up almost my whole screen here. 
and it's got these little um, clasps that kind of keep it tight on there. But the nice thing about the lid is it does have this like silicone gasket that goes around the the whole um, lid there. And the idea is that this keeps all the paint inside fresh for a while. Um, so it's also got a little lid so that when you're transporting it, um, your paint isn't supposed to joss around and get out of its containers here. So it's cool. It's got a lot of different little compartments. Let me just hold that up to the screen here or the camera. So I can't like tip it out. I can't let stuff all fall out. But yeah, each of these has a little compartment that you can take out. Just kind of nice in case you need to um, uh, clean it. Makes it a little easier. That, that is a nice thing that um, you can take all these compartments out and you can clean it easier. So I'm a little skeptical about how well this just a small little gasket will keep things out. But from what I saw in the picture, you can put a sponge in here and uh, that will probably keep things moist. The thing I'm not seeing is actually like an instruction manual on their website or on the Jerry's website. They'll give you more tips on how to keep things um, fresh, but that'll be an interesting one. Uh, the one thing I'll say is this is probably gonna be destined for me to be a studio box because it's pretty damn heavy when you have all these plastic things in here not to mention when you start to fill it up with paint things are going to be pretty heavy to to carry around unless uh, you're not like a hardcore hiking paint type of person like I'm beginning to be <laughs> so I'm definitely going to use it in the studio and I think that way it will probably keep the paint wet longer but I already have that the little airtight palette that I use for out in the field and I like having my paint in there so this might be an, just a extra accessory to keep my mixtures nice and moist in case I have mixtures I want to try out so this will be a fun one to check out it's a Krillomizer palette system oh and this will help us with probably both of this and the other one but it's a Turner acrylic wash palette cleaner and uh not sure exactly what it is but it's kind of like a gel almost doesn't really have much of an odor maybe a slight little plasticky kind of odor but okay it's a polyoxyethylene laurel ether <laughs> I have not looked up what that is actually but it's a Creative Materials Art Institute certified. And uh, this will be interesting because it's meant to be for getting acrylic gouache off of your palette, which um, if you've ever used acrylic gouache on something like a ceramic palette, um, it's, it comes out pretty easily, but you might still need a little extra. So yeah, this will be really cool to check out. I'm excited to see if this actually works. So they sent me a lot of um, Turner Design Gouache, their, um, their paints, and a lot of these aren't colors I normally use, so um, that can be both good or bad depending on uh, your perspective on it, but um, I'm always excited to try out new colors, see what I can um, add to my palette in case there's something that I was missing and I didn't even know. <laughs> so uh, we got Lilac. We got pink, just straight up pink, um, sky blue, horizon blue, rose, and jade. <laughs> jade seems like a fun color to mess with. Also, we got brilliant violet, leaf green, and magenta, and Last but not least, we've got mixing white. <laughs> so I'm guessing this is zinc. Um, I will have to go through and check out the light fastness rating. I bet a lot of you are probably curious about some of these uh, more 
magenta or uh, more neon like colors like this pink so let's open it up check it out oh yeah that's a real bright pink see that and focus <laughs> So when I actually do a, a more thorough review of all these different products, I'll let you know and which ones are light fast and which ones aren't. I'm just going through these quick as I can. Speaking of paint, we also got, this is, looks really interesting. It's a Richardson casein set, underpainting set of six. If you guys follow James Gurney, he likes to use casein a lot, and he's used casein for underpaintings for his gouache art as well. So I'm really curious to know how this will work for underpainting. And casein is something I've only played with really um, minimally. So this will be something to check out. And if I really like casein, I'll probably just pick up a, a set a tube of white from somewhere and uh, work with it some more. But uh, there's also Gareth Jones. He does awesome work with casein. And he probably uses like a really limited palette like this. So that should be fun. So I'm really happy to, to get this new set to play around with. And uh, I will be looking forward to checking that out. All right, we got some more sketchbooks in here. Um, actually, let's start with this one. I'm glad they sent me this handbook journal watercolor landscape book because this is a brand of sketchbooks I really like. It was one on my wish list that I was hoping they'd send to me because I know I like this one. I could give you guys a really um, excellent review about it. So uh, looking forward to that. And this is a, a new sketchbook. I've never tried to play around with this one, but it's Indigo Art Papers Watercolor Handmade Wiro Pad. And it's 24 sheets, six by nine inches. The paper is 100% cotton rag, natural white. So this looks like really quality paper and really unique and interesting for, um, for a sketchbook. And also each paper has a little um, protective sheet so of like almost like wax paper but uh the paper is really cool uh, the texture is super interesting it smells like cotton as well <laughs> so i'm really looking forward to trying out this paper and uh letting you guys know what i think of it and uh, you guys are, will probably be pretty um, curious about what it looks like or how it handles right 100% cotton rag. Um, I don't know the price on this one, but I can't imagine it's super cheap, but I'll let you know if it's worth picking up something like this. Um, really excited. I don't think I've ever tried um, handmade paper before. And speaking of, I don't know, I wish they gave me a bit more info on this one, but they also gave me a ream of these handmade sheets as well. Every edge is deckled, which is really cool. Uh, I know a lot of people like that look to it. That's, that's actually two. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is uh, an interesting handmade, probably all cotton paper as well. Don't know if you can see the texture on it, but I look forward to trying that one out with both watercolor and gouache. I will actually find out what uh, type of paper this is. But yeah, I will find out what type of paper this is and let you guys know when I do a review of it. And finally, um, they sent me a uh, Crescent Illustration Boards, 9 by 12, a couple of 9 by 12 sheets. And uh, if you guys have never used Illustration Board for gouache, you're really missing out because it's a really premium material to paint on. Back in the golden age of illustration, a lot of gouache painters used illustration board to turn in their their assignments and commissions on. So it's a real classic material to use for gouache. And I encourage you to try it if you never have. You might really like it. So, you know, it's just like Crescent. 
illustration boards. You can find these at most art supply stores, but as I said, um, this all comes from Jerry. So anything you see here that you want to order, you can get from jerrysartorama.com. So yeah, if you guys have requests on what you want me to try out first, if there's something that you're especially curious about, let me know. But otherwise, I'll go through all this stuff um, and give my honest opinion on everything. So if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe so that when these come out, you can know exactly what I think of all of them. And uh, yeah, if you are subscribed already and you are not notified, hit the little bell button at the top and you'll get notified when I post a new video to my channel. So if you're especially interested in these reviews, go ahead and do that. In the meantime, I'll get to painting. All right, see you next time, guys. If you're interested in learning everything I know about painting and gouache, I have a course on ZentineAcademy.com called Gouache Painting Made Easy, and you can either follow the link in the description below or Google Gouache Painting Made Easy with Sergio Lopez.